Alright guys, so I think the lab rat just gave out on me. And yeah, I'm in the middle of the road here. But um yeah, so I was just driving and I and I stalled. I heard something weird. Yeah, to me it sounded like a plastic bag, just like a I thought a plastic bag got sucked into the turbo, it stalled out the engine. And, uh, so I was still rolling, just coasting. I had it in gear, but with the clutch in, so whenever I would release, I heard it, so I would clutch back in. So I just put it in neutral, uh, let it coast. I checked under the hood, there's nothing wrong that visually that I can see, but once I crank it, wait, the, the starter always does that. It just doesn't crank normally was you know like with the compression and all that so either it dropped the spring or it, or it uh i don't think a rod because it, it didn't sound anything like mechanical it just it just like something just snapped yeah, so i'm thinking it could be the timing belt if if there's no compression i don't know the uh was it the cam belt because it has a drive belt right there but I need to check it right now. I need to pull this car out of the way. But uh, just an uh, update, damn. I've had this for what, six, seven years. And I was getting ready to paint it again, change some more settings on it. and <laughs> But we'll just figure, figure out what's wrong with it, how we can fix it. Uh, I mean, everything's possible. But uh, just the timing is just. So, I'll let you guys know. All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the channel. Um, so today I'm gonna perform a timing belt kit on the car. This is my 97 Mitsubishi Mirage. Uh, the engine is a 4G15, 1.5 liter, single overhead cam, 12 Um It's got a big turbo by Max Peening Rods. Uh, first thing, well I already, well as you can see, it has no belt. It is, but it's right here. So it's torn. This is an interference engine, meaning um, if the cam and like the pistons rotate other than timing, the valves will hit in the piston and it can bend the valves. So this snapped while driving, but it was like kind of like coasting, idling. It doesn't matter, it was still on. Um, I didn't hear anything mechanically like, you know, valves hitting or anything. I did hear like a small grind. But I'm thinking it was like the grooves of the belt of this. Um, but we'll just see, I guess. So first off, um, so it already has the valve cover off and the dust cover for the timing gear here. Um, I need to remove these other bolts. They're tens for the bottom. I also need to remove the uh, pulley on the bottom. And um, first things first, I'm going to go ahead and just... Uh, lift up the car so I can take off this tire right here okay so I took off the wheel and it gives us a better view of right here uh, we're gonna take off the harmonic balancer there's a bolt uh, so we can access the cover in the back alright so this other belt is for the alternator and the water pump which we're gonna replace those while we're in there and uh, yeah, we're gonna check what's been leaking. I pushed the car in here, I didn't even start, it doesn't even work right now. But uh, I've had this leak for a while and the valve cover was also leaking. The gasket seal around it was just really hard because of the heat or something, I don't know how old it was. But it was leaking some oil and that's why right here above the water pump there's a little puddle of oil right there. So, unless it's like by the turbo, like the um, the blow by, like the excess pressure, like on the you know, crankcase or whatever. Um, I don't know, whatever wasn't venting. But um, so yeah, we're gonna continue. I'm gonna just go ahead and take off some bolts, some belts, and uh, keep you updated. 
I loosened up the four bolts to the water pump pulley um, and now the bracket that adjusts the alternator I already loosened up this bolt so now the adjuster bolt uh, is a 13 so just loosen it up like that and it has another bolt on the bottom so I need to loosen up but I'm going to remove this belt Inside the bolt. And we can take off the oops, the pulley for the water pump. Um, now I can get to these bolts right here for the plastic cover and also for the water pump. Okay, so right here to remove the harmonic balancer bolt. I have this, um, it's like for old school jacks or something, uh, but it's 19 or 3 quarter. Um, and then I have this pipe from the jack, uh, just using it for extra leverage. And I stuck it right here underneath the strut. So right here it's pretty firm, it should move. Uh, good thing I'll be inside cranking it so I won't be anywhere near here. So just going to give it a quick crank and hopefully that loosens up the bolt. Alright, another op option is a strap wrapped around a few times and then I have the hook just somewhere hooked up over here on a chassis. So right there it's pretty hard. Uh, I threw some water on the strap so it wouldn't slide. So let's go ahead and try that. Just a little bit more, I felt release tension. Okay, that's all the way in. later all right so none of that worked so brought the big boy right here this is the DeWalt 20 volt max and it's got that big old battery right there it should be fully charged so let's go ahead and try Tomorrow. Come on. Uh, come on. <clears throat> All right, so I think this has too much flex to it. Also, it is a three quarter or a 19, but I check. I hope it goes like that just a while ago. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of these uh, three quarter inch 
um, sockets and that fits more better on there but instead of because I don't have the breaker bar on me I'm gonna use this pipe wrench and set it on right here like so and then I'll put the pipe in here not at this angle it's so aggressive but maybe like that and we'll try that so there's less flex Sounded aggressive. I think that was either a tarantula hawk. Ouch. I just scraped my face too. Oh, that freaking hurt. I just scratched my face somewhere here in the forehead. Uh, I don't know why I can't see it. This right here, I feel it though. Right here. Oh man, that's gonna suck having a freaking. Don't be laughing at me. <laughs> that bird is laughing at me. Plan. I think I've been going at it in the very cautious way like try not to break anything even more because look I broke this piece off of the harmonic balancer right here um, so yeah that kind of makes me feel like man like now I need to replace that one I'm kind of not that worried right now at the moment because this is it it has two belts, one here and one in the back. So the one in the back controls the water pump and the alternator. And the one in the front controls the AC, which I don't have because of the turbo. So right now I'm kind of not that bummed about it because of that. I'm not using this. Uh, I still kind of feel like the balancing, but, um, you know, any vibration. But uh, I, I'm, I'm okay. I just don't want to break anything else. But right now, I was also considering, I've seen some videos where hateful mechanics throw some thread locker or, or, I don't know, JB Weld or something on the bolt and then just tighten, you know, like the bolt. Um, I don't think that's the case here. I think it's just old and the rust seized it or whatever. Uh, just something. But, uh, you know, even just applying some tension with the pipe wrench or the bar. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to lift it and hold it at a certain temp like a uh, certain uh, tension so See if the bolt can you know just kind of wants to loosen but um, Never like full aggression like you're coming out regardless. I haven't applied any heat to it yet um, So there's still some options left before I like truly go monkey at it like go ape at it and um, You know decide to break something else Alright, Bacon's excited to see what I got. Uh, it's a torch and some PB Blaster penetrating catalyst. So I'm gonna go ahead and just blast it with this. Just spray some. Well, actually, I should wait. Let me heat it up first. Alright, so. This one comes with a 14 ounce tank. How is it? Propane? Butane. 
and the little torch. This one comes with the little trigger, so it already sparks. What is it in here or in here? Where is it? It sparks, it lights it up. Nothing. Okay guys, I think I I think I finally cracked it. Wait. I think I finally cracked it. I've been here. There you go. See the tides are changing. God even sent me some wind. Look how much I'm sweating already. Yep. It's loose. Check it out. Oh, wait. There it is. Woo! That was a bee. Since yesterday I've been working on that bolt. But it is off now to see if I need a puller to remove that uh, balancer. No, I don't think so. Nope, hey, look. It's just to remove the bolt. Damn, it's so hot. <laughs> Damn, even the socket is hot. Look all the scratches from the pipe wrench. I put it here and use the bar, but uh. I was not ready for another bill. Damn. I think it was right here at the beginning, that little corrosion. I think it's still hot. Ooh. All right, so I think I just removed this one. And I think that there's another one. Okay. Uh, this is one of the last bolts for that uh, cover. The timing belt cover. So I'll take that off. And then. Okay. Oh, this is the cover. I think the water pump. That's the belt. And then, all right, here's the timing belt. I 
I don't think the whole belt is here so that we can measure it. But this is our timing belt. Oh yeah, it, it was pretty old. I'm sorry. Uh, these timing belts are supposed to be replaced at every at every 60,000 miles and this car already hit 200,000. Um, so I'm gonna wash this part right here. Okay, oh, you know what? Look at that. I think it might have been me or it might have been broken this whole time. But this is the crank sensor right here. It has a crack. I mean, this is the wires to the plug. If this thing isn't plugged in, the car won't start. But unless it's been like that, because the crack, like inside the crack, it's still oily and everything. It doesn't move or anything. It vibrates a little bit, but yeah. Soap. Sorry, bacon. Alright, so I just washed this area, uh, so first let's go ahead and check what came in the kit because I think this right here must be the belt and the tensioner because there's something hard in here and this is of course the water pump. So let me go ahead and take these out of the packages and the boxes or let's check this one out. And comes with the gasket. Yeah, the gasket is in there. So here's the water pump. Let's see direction like this. Yeah, this goes like that. So we'll see those top two bolts, which is one here and one on that one. This is for the cover. And then we've got these two, so it's one, two, three four, five bolts, six, the six bolts. Okay, I took off all the bolts for the water pump. Okay. So it doesn't look that bad on the inside. It doesn't sound that bad. But, okay, so I removed the crank seal, I mean crank sensor from there, and it looks like we damaged it on trying to remove, trying to remove uh, the harmonic balancer. So, there was some metal pieces right here, metal fragments. I'm not sure one of these specs should do it, should be it. Uh, look there it is so that's not it it's in the metal there it is so this is like a little magnet that goes on the sensor right here so we're gonna have to buy this one otherwise it's not gonna start and to put all this back and then for it not all right so I went ahead and took off the tensioner with the spring and the water pump so now let me just uh, wash up here Oh, it's all clean. Um, and I also took off the crank sensor from here. We're going to figure out just rotating this one, see if it'll come out. That way I can uh, check if it's straight or if it's bent like one of these fins or why it broke the sensor. But uh, that's where we're at. Alright, this was easy to remove. Uh, so it's just 
put it aligned so it doesn't hit on anything like there or behind these fins in the back these but you see once it spins and this plate wing or whatever goes behind this or these you can't take it out but once you align it uh, to where nothing is hitting you can just pull it out like that and I was noticing this little speck right there that is a piece of metal from the sensor so uh, I'm still unsure whether I broke it or it was already broke but the car was running before the belt snapped so I don't know okay so the crank seal it comes with a brand new uh, seal and I already checked it right here it's just like the perfect size in here um, like inside and out so it's just a matter of taking that one out um, I think I'll get like a like a hook pick or a flat screwdriver or something and capture it from the inner lip and then I have this socket right here that fits like over the entire seal like that and it also fits inside the the bolt the, the crank right here so I could put it and hammer it in here is this one so just clean it up in there and then we'll insert this one Okay, so for the crank gear, but it's for the timing belt. It's the timing belt gear behind the crank pulley or harmonic balancer. I don't know what to say anymore. But um, there's only one way of going in. You see this one, uh, it's like it's kind of like a wood, wood roof gear. Uh, it's like a guide, but this this side is a lot bigger than this side. So if we put it on like one way, it'll go in. And you can see that this pin has a hole, and that one there's this pin right here, so that tells you that it's TDC, just a little bit more rotated. But if you try to put it the other way, it won't go in. You know, so there's only one way of going in. Like that so we're safe on that one the water pump is installed I added a little bit of a uh, high temp silicone and then well the tensioner will install it right now this is TDC so we need to make sure that the cam is TDC as well but I don't know if I should rotate the cam as I'm rotating the crank just to make sure that there's nothing interfering or just leave this at TDC and try to rotate the cam. I'm not sure. I'll figure it out. <clears throat> okay, same for the harmonic balancer. This little um, circle, this little hole right here is where the pin would go, the timing pin. Um, so it goes like that. So only one way to go in. But I'm just checking because I need to put the crank sensor first before I put the timing cover. So I'm going to go into town and get that sensor. I'll be right back. Well, I checked AutoZone and I checked O'Reilly's and none of them have it. I have to order it and it takes a few days. Now, AutoZone has the crank sensor for 30 bucks, but they don't have it. O'Reilly's has the sensor. Uh, they actually have two different brands. Uh, one is like about 55, the other one's about 65. They don't have either or. I know they can price match, but they, they still don't have 
uh, the sensor they need to order it uh, so if I'm gonna have to order it wait a few days I might as well look online or other options and uh, Amazon being the fastest uh, two-day shipping so we're Monday today I'll get the sensor by Wednesday so in the meantime I'm gonna have the car um, just as is and we'll finish fixing it then okay so for the motor mount I need to put the belt in through the motor mount uh, so I went ahead and took off these bolts and the one that goes in through here for the rubber mount so before all this before all this I do have a jack just holding the engine up that way I can adjust the height and I have some engine stands holding the car up um, that way I could just like loosen up all the bolts remove it you know the engine stays in place so right here I can you know, throw the belt in and then put the motor mount back on its place we just go ahead and clean these surfaces I think this would be the perfect time to check on the cam seal uh, since I already have the engine mount removed um, it's only this bolt right here take off the gear and then the seal would be just right there now the timing on this one right now you see right here this line on this tooth well that one is supposed to be over here on this little arrow right there it's supposed to be aligned right here so right now it's half halfway on its rotation on its engine whatever uh, so it's halfway and that's why over here on the um, on the timing for right now this is the pin for the timing mark and it's supposed to be aligned on this side so right now I also have it halfway through its cycle so if I put the belt and I rotate it hopefully even if I'm just like a tooth off um, I'll be able to rotate both of them at the same time the crank and the cam alright I loosened up the cam bolt and let's see what kind of timing mark it has it's just a short bolt, fine threads. Here's a cam sprocket. There's a timing mark and there's the timing uh, position. So, you know, it only has one way of uh, going in. There's the seal around it. It looks like it could be like, uh, you know, venting out or some oils or so from the seal so might as well replace it all right like just like down here everything came out clean that's by adding some degreaser into you know the water uh, so it comes out clean uh, but sometimes there's still some oil and uh, a good solution for cleaning it's like TB blaster with a little old rag like that just a little bit of it and this is really helpful when cleaning the engine picks up all the oil loosens it up and then with the microfiber it just uh, cleans it so it's coming out so this is the seal for the camshaft right here and it is a perfect fit both inside and out so we're gonna do the same thing as the bottom I also have a socket that you know fits perfectly on there so we're gonna use that
Okay, so the cam seal is on. Now it's time to put everything back. Um, so we're going to make sure not to forget the belt it goes in here. Before we put the engine mount back on its place. Okay, so I have the cam gear installed and the timing mark is right here. Now counting all the little tooth, it's 46 tooth all the way around and half of that is 23 and this is where that tooth would land uh, on this line, um, on this one where it starts like before the arrows. So following that one, it goes straight to the um, to the alignment mark right here on this on this one so that's half of the rotation the the TDC is over here but this is half TDC or, or like whatever now down here I did it the same way since the TDC mark is over here and the pin is supposed to be up here I just uh, marked it uh, halfway around meaning this hole right here and it would be the little U so that is lined with that. So my theory is rotating this, by the time this one gets to TDC, the cam on top will also get to TDC. So I'm gonna put the harmonic balancer with the bolt, that way I can rotate it. And I do have the tensioner, it's not tightened, it doesn't have the spring, it's just holding the belt in place and just a little tight. But uh, I'm gonna rotate it and see what happens. But so far, I don't feel or hear anything that's hitting. About right there. Alright. So now we have this mark, the tooth aligned with this one. So the, the top, the cam is TDC at the moment and I'll check all the uh because they all seemed fine when I checked them uh nothing out of the ordinary but um and then down here well I need to take off the harmonic balancer well after removing the harmonic balancer I noticed that the tooth is still down here which is supposed to be up here uh, so it is still like half a tooth out of alignment I would say alright guys so it's gonna be take two I didn't want to keep on cranking it I just rotated it back to the top mark this one had came back all the way to the original starting spot um, so at this point what I did is I took off the harmonic balancer and then I you know took off the belt rotated the crank to it was TDC on the bottom put the belt back on so we're gonna rotate it See if now, if we rotate it to where this one lands on here, the bottom one theoretically should land at TDC and we should be set. But um, let's, let's figure it out. The last time I didn't feel any hitting, any contact of anything uh, on that half turn. But um, let's see this one. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, that just released right there. Just Let's check the top. Okay, that was like a quarter of a turn. Right here, it's building up some compression. But nothing hitting. Yeah, nothing hitting. just the compression 
so you can hear it. And right there. All right, guys, I think we got it now. Um, so first off, here's the timing mark on the sprocket. And that aligns well with the timing mark on the head right here. OK. And then on the bottom, we have the crank gear right here. And the timing mark is right there. And the one on the oil pump on the back on the engine block is the timing mark. So it is aligned. Now we can go ahead and tighten up the, we'll actually put the spring on the tensioner and then we'll tighten that. And of course we still have to wait till we install the uh, sensor right here, the crank sensor. It is Wednesday my dudes. I got the crankshaft positioning sensor from A Premium seller on Amazon. Got it shipped out really quick, got it in two days. So um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, open up this box. Boom. All right, check it out. So here's a brand new sensor. Um, this little part, you know, this is what was broken on the last one. Brand new plug, it's even covered. Uh, so let's go ahead and install it. I'm done uh, installing everything in the car. Really sweaty. Um, this is my workspace. Very messy. <laughs> but uh, I'm done. So I put the timing cover back on, you know, and the engine mount is tightened. Everything is tight. The harmonic balancer, water pump pulley tightened. <laughs> alternator in the belt that's you know stretched and uh, you know the adjuster is tight um, the cam uh, pulley was tightened and I put all the the sensor connects right here the new one that we just bought so it comes out through here through the oil pump and then it just plugs in right here it has this little metal bracket and uh, this one has yeah, to plug valve cover is on with a new seal I haven't cranked it but I did rotate the engine uh, making sure I didn't hear anything. I saw all the valves going up and down. I even heard and felt the compression on each cylinder. You know, that's, you know, whatever. But um, I also, like, uh, you know, make sure that the reluctor wheel wasn't hitting on the crank sensor. And uh, pretty much it. I haven't cranked it because I don't have a battery. But I'm going to park the truck right here past cables. That should be enough. Before I put the wheel on... I don't think there's much else I could do like after this if it doesn't start because if it's the head or something but um, if, you know now that it cranks we can also check the compression but uh, let's go ahead and uh, see okay so I have the truck with the cables on right now it says 12.9 uh, volts and I'm gonna try it like that
feel a difference. The engine is a little shaky. It's high idle. I hear a little sound on it. All right guys, so the job is complete. The car starts, but unfortunately I do think that we hurt the engine by the way that it sounds. Uh, it kind of has a little vibration, like a rough idle. Well, actually the idle is a little bit uh, raised. It's high idle. And um, th there is this little one noise that I'm not liking. Uh, as of right now, I can like drive it around. I'm afraid that if it is a bent valve, I don't want to break that bent valve and then really cause a major damage inside the engine. Uh, so next step would probably be get a get a compression tester and check the compression on all cylinders. And whenever I'm prepared, probably you know new head gaskets and some new valves, and hopefully that'll be it. Well, I don't know about machining the head, but um, that's probably for some other day, some other video. This video is, is pretty long. I appreciate you guys watching all the way through. But uh, we did make it run. Unfortunately, this was, you know, failure on my part on lack of maintenance. Uh, this belt should have been replaced a long time ago. And I just, I just, you know, uh, I apologize to my car. But uh, I'm down a car. So unfortunately, I am borrowing a, like the truck. My other truck uh, popped an airbag so unfortunately I can't drive that one either because it's now it sits way too low but um, I already ordered the airbag I already have the airbag here it's it already arrived so we'll do that in some other video today I am exhausted uh, it is really really hot so I also feel pretty bummed out about the car it works and it's running but um, man um, I guess uh, we're gonna hold on to the paint job and I was actually looking at a smaller turbo for this one but uh, we'll come up with some new plans guys so for right now thank you guys so much for watching sorry if I am super sweaty it is really really hot here but uh, that's gonna be it for today's video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and you know I hope to see you guys in the next video peace out